Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kalia Tucker with Synergy Performance in the lovely home of Mr. Khaled Freeman here in Las Vegas. And we have the wonderful opportunity this year to follow Khaled throughout uh, his life and his experiences, uh, triumphs and challenges as a performing artist this year. So this is the beginning of that journey that we're gonna be doing with him. And we're just gonna start off just getting to know him a little bit and hopefully you guys will tune in every month to see a little bit more of what really goes on in the life of a performing artist. So Paulette right. Freeman, thank you for letting us and inviting us into your home, taking time out from your busy schedule. And for those that don't know or haven't looked you up, tell us a little bit about what your journey as a performing artist has been up to this point. Okay, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, now, I'll try not to ramble too much. So, um, well, it all started when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a, 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 I wanted to be an entertainer, basically because my dad was a drummer, he was mm -hmm. a professional drummer, mom was a DJ, and I saw, I, I was dancing when I was very young, but right. I saw Bobby Brown Watch out. at the age of 10, and I was such a fan, and I said, Daddy, what is that called? How can I be an uh, entertainer? I want to be an artist. So I ended up taking like show choir and, uh, you know, dance classes and things like this. Well, not really dance classes, but just watching and, and just trying to mimic, you know what I mean? And I, I decided, I said, you know, I want to be an entertainer. So from then, I, I, I just, my, I mean, there's a lot to it, but right. that's where it kind of started. And I've become now an accomplished uh, professional dancer, choreographer, and uh, overall entertainer. I play drums my, myself. And um, but yeah, that, that's, that all started because of the, you know, the inspiration of, 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 of certain artists, you know, not only Bobby Brown, but Michael Jackson and, right. and, and uh, you know, Everything from Sam Cooke to you know Morris Day. Any of you go for you say like I loved soul music. I loved it so much, and right. my father and my mom had that 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 synergy between them that they just <laughs> was like, yo, we we gonna raise this family around music somehow, and that's that's how it all started. Right now, I do remember a story around the grapevine about a pivotal moment between football. And oh, yeah. performing arts. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Tell, tell them a little bit about So what when I, I was uh, I was a football player, my dad really encouraged me to be a football player or you know my academics. He really shunned me away from the idea of being in in the arts, arts. or at least at least being a professional any artist like that because he said the paycheck never be the same. You, you know it's unpredictable and you right. gotta you know what I mean probably do this, right? So I was playing sports. I was really good in our city, Albuquerque, New Mexico. At the time, we were undefeated. We was going to the championship. And I had this point in my senior year in football that we were in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And the show choir, Young Americans, were coming to Albuquerque. And they were going to be, you know, uh, doing an audition and a workshop. So I said, well, I really want to go to that workshop, but the game is on Saturday, too. And so I had to make a choice. And that choice was, do I go to play this football game in the playoffs as a star running back and help my city and team win this championship thing? Or do I go to a show choir weekend of dance and singing, yeah, yeah. I'm like, and I was torn. I was like, what do I do? And I had a friend, a conversation with my friend in the locker room and my coach is over there and get ready for you. I said, I said, yo, I think I need to tell him that if, you know, if this or something like if we win this game this week next week I can't do the next game because we'll be in the this thing so I made the choice and I decided to go do the Young Americans workshop I didn't do the game we actually won that game mm -hmm. but then the following week we lost the championship so anyway um, but I ended up being a Young American and I moved to California and that was the that was the fork in my road had I played that game and not done the workshop now I could have probably auditioned later and did something else but I had a scholarship to play football. There were scouts and all that stuff. So yeah, that, that was a big movement. Right. Moment in my life. Big, uh, a crossroads, a, a, a pivotal moment in yeah. your in your career. But that took courage and that took character and that took a lot of foresight, even at a young age, for you to be able to make that kind of a decision. So you've evolved as a performer. We'll talk a little bit more about all of the different hats that you wear. but. That evolution 
evolution because I was at a young age. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm sure there has been an evolution of you as a young man. And from a beginning, from the very beginning, your character already was being formed in these tough decisions that you had to make. How, how do you think that these experiences as a performing artist have helped shape you as a young man or even as a young black man? Well, this it's all connected, right? You know, yeah. you know life, life is, is not just predict, you know, you can't, you can't tell what's going to happen, obviously, right? right? So knowing at that age I was gonna be an entertainer, I was like, I'm I'm going for it. Right. Like I had there was no plan B. Yeah. Okay. I had a plan A. <laughs> and everything that was against plan A what just it was a plan A. I was like, I'm gonna be a young American entertainer. I'm gonna chase my dreams of being a Bobby Brown solo art, whatever I wanted to be, I was gonna do that. Now I had to make big changes and big choices. Right. I.e. moving to California. Changing my religion, changing my name, changing everything that was a, who I was before I got to California mm -hmm. to become who I think, you know, I'm stand tall and proud to be today. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there was uh, a lot of things that I think when you when you set your sight on something, say, OK, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You can't let I mean, sure, the, having a plan B is good, but like I think it distracts from plan A. So I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Right. And, and that's what I did. And I, I guess it shaped something out of me and went oh, to some kind of oh yeah, it's, got, it's gotten you this far. <laughs> got me this far. Which, which speaks to your focus, your persistence, your determination. What keeps you grounded and or even balanced to be able to be able to just stay on that plan A? I got a good track. Yeah, yes. I mean, I got a good family base. I do. I have a good, my father, my mother, my, my brothers and sisters. Um, religion has played a really big part in, in who I am, Islam. And being a Muslim in America as a black man with a name like Khalid is a hard thing to do, but standing for something that mean, like you said, right. you know what I mean? You gotta stand for something, you gotta know, you know, you gotta, I believe in God and I believe that there's a life after. So having faith in religion and, and or just and knowing that, that it's not about me, it's about someone else, mm -hmm. and like I'm just here to serve, I'm trying to do my part, mm -hmm. then everything else is just like, it's details, you know what I mean? So. I, I think that is a, along with like in martial arts. I was into martial arts at a very young age too and did got my black belt in two different styles and whatnot. Like people think it might be violent or whatever, but Ishinaru and, and Taekwondo are very, very instrumental in making me in a very st stable manner, right. like a very focused person, right. understanding how to use my strength to work for me and if not against me, like how to keep a you know, because, you know, of course, martial arts is, is, is a defense, you know what I mean, self-defense. Yeah. And then, so, I don't get irate and, and overly whatever, but I, I know how to control myself. Mm -hmm. And any, because hostility comes around us as a black man, mm -hmm. there's things that happen and you have to go, you know what I mean? And that's our sign right there, you know what I mean? Like, I can hurt you, but I come in peace. Right. So, this is what, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think being grounded by an early age of being in martial arts and learning how to use, you know, like my skill as a, as a weapon um, and also um, Islam and my family. Right. Family, faith, yeah. and um, your other experiences. Now that's you as a man or you as an artist, but that's your focus and, and your, your foundation. What about what drives you then artistically? Is there, are there certain influences or are there certain things that, because you spoke on basically you understanding that you have purpose and that's also part of what keeps you grounded so is that also part of what drives you artistically yeah, yeah i'm sure like i'm gonna tell you a story and this is one of my favorite things that that i believe helps me i'm motivated by a woman harriet tubman mm -hmm. if you don't know we know she was a born a slave escaped from slavery you know got to philadelphia and ate, you know 13 trips to underground rope and she went back for more when you go from, like, I can't even fathom it. Like, I live in 2000, like, I'm still, I'm a free man. My last name, free, I'm free. Mm -hmm. But someone wasn't free. This woman was born into slavery. Right. Escaped, to escape and to get to where you want to go. Everybody wanted freedom. When you get to freedom, why would you go back? Mm -hmm. Not only did she go back, she went back multiple times. The, the story goes 13 different trips or more, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm like, that woman was so brave and so, so ambitious and so, had so much courage. And to this day, she's, you know, re, you know, resounded, not resounded, um, 
you know, a strong impact. You know, people, yeah, has a strong impact on the shape of our, our as our culture. Anyway, I, I approach my art in that kind of way. Like I have reached a certain, like I have my set of goal. Mm -hmm. Like I want to reach the young Americans. You know what I mean? I got there, and now what can I do to help someone else get to where I got? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So every time I accomplish the next goal, I'm like, that was amazing. I made it to Super Bowl, you know what I mean? Like, or something huge like that. Now I want to teach. So now I became a teacher, a choreographer, and every time I get a chance to teach one and reach one, that's that's my idea of like moving forward, striving, or, or I don't know. What drives me? What drives me, yeah, yeah. that was the question. So yeah. like, how, that drives me knowing that I've, I've done so many things and been so many places that it's almost unfair mm -hmm. if I don't get this shit, I don't give it back to somebody, you know what I mean? So I'm like, look, check it out. This is what I did or this is what you can do. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not an inspirational speaker, but I, I, my actions right. say a lot, you know what I mean? I'm not one to like coach you and tell you how, but if you see how I walk and what I do, you'll right. be like, okay, he did it and he came from Detroit to Albuquerque to LA and now, you know, right. wherever. Right. The world. Right. And I, we asked early on a little bit about your journey and uh, Khaled is pretty humble about some of the things that he's done, but he's <laughs> um, briefly, I think, uh, just the, the highlight reel is, you know, those of you that I said at the beginning were in Khaled's house. <laughs> and the reason he keeps pointing to this is because these are, this is a collection of hotel room keys and it goes for two walls here um just i don't even think this is all of the places that you yeah been. This, this is a stack of more there's, there's so many more but yeah some, some of the places but Khaled has toured i think it was nine it's years with stomp nine years with stomp um you did the the first movie as well stomp the yard stomp the yard stomp out loud stomp out loud you did cirque cirque michael, michael jackson, jackson the immortal tour um and those i mean and then there's Mulati, and then the creation there's of Soul Mulata. Cloud. And recently he was in Super Bowl, he was one of the choreographers, right? For the choreography team, team, like on the field team for the mass cast. Yeah, yeah for, for the Super Bowl. So he speaks very humbly, and he didn't mention a lot of those things, but just so you guys can get an appreciation when he's, when he's talking about his drive and his persistence, there's something to be said for where that has taken you. Now, speaking of where that has taken you, is there anything that you think you would do over again, maybe as an artist, if you had the chance? If I went to that game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, I love football, and that's why doing the Super Bowl was such a great, amazing thing, because like, it, it was something I really loved to do, playing football, playing sports, and I still play a little bit here and there, and I still do martial arts, but... I think I made, I know I made the right choice. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a, even a, to this day. I'm like, I love what I do. I wake up every morning and I get a chance to travel the world and to teach and to, and to just dance and love right. and, and, and perform and whatever, all the things that I do. And it, and it doesn't ever get old. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know. Football wouldn't have, I'm 30, I would have been broke by now. My body would have been done. But here I am still dancing and doing what I love. Right. So, Playing the drums is another story. Now that's something I still want to do, and I want to be better at, or I want to become. If I was versed in drums the way I am as a dancer or whatever, I'd be, I'd probably be just as happy because I nothing is more fulfilling than watch, and be a part of a musical set and just watch drummers play and do the thing. You know what I mean? So right. that's what I really love. That's what I love. So no other no other path that you think you could have taken that really would have made you as happy as where you are right now. Nah, nah, nothing. I, I can't even think, like, yeah. Now, speaking of, of that, how, how did the evolution of Khaled, the performer, then start coming up into Khaled, the choreographer, and then Khaled, now the entrepreneur? How, how did that start to triple and, and domino into all these other hats that you now have? Well, I guess, yeah, I do wear a lot of hats, and they all, they vary, but they, they're similar. It's a lifestyle that I try to create but it didn't even, it's not like I did it on purpose, it just happened, right? Like, mm -hmm. I wake up and I have to, I have to cre create a piece of choreography, then I gotta dance one day, then I gotta do this, and I gotta do that. So, I think through, through the necessity mm -hmm. and or the, the, the quest to keep growing, mm -hmm. right? So like, I love Stephanie, 
I love dan I love doing this art form, African American and Greek fraternity stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, in my opinion, there's a lot of great. I don't want to get into too much, but like I I, I kind of reached a plateau where I was like I wasn't getting. I was like here. I was like mm -hmm. I want to learn something that can add to this. You know what I right. mean? And to evolve the you know what I mean? Pour some more, pour some on it. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? And then I learned how to play more djembe and cajon and drumming things. I, I started thinking and counting more like a drummer. And then I was like, ooh. And then Stomp came along and taught me a lot of musicality, which helped evolve what I know as a stepper to, you know, to just kind of mix it. You know what I mean? Right. Fuse those things together. And then, of course, dancing and hip hop and the street styles that I love. Adding that to it basically built this, not an empire, but like built a, a, a fusion of a style that I like to call a kind of greens, a mixture of something that's flavorful, something that's dope and, and good for you, uh, that, <laughs> that oh, then put it all in the pot, put some of that, you know, neck bone in it, you know what I mean? So I think, I don't know, the evolution of who I am now started off as being like, you know, not a simple dancer, but like this kind of a dancer, creating new ways to make it look and feel different every time I did it. Right. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's really, I, I think what, what's coming across loud and clear is there is no just complacency. I get here, I'm good, I've achieved this, I'm good. It's okay, well now, how can I take it to the next level? And that's probably how organically everything sounds like evolved from you growing and wanting to continue to grow. Yeah. I think all artists need to do that. I think a true artist is that is that person that that you can watch their career, watch their life, or whatever, you say, man, they, they recreate themselves all the time. Mm -hmm. Some people can, some people can, or maybe it's not for everybody. Maybe right. some people like to get to that to that freedom and then stay there, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, what more, once you get to, like, I've had so many accomplishments in my life where I'm like, oh my God, that was the best day of my life. That was the best performance. I met so-and-so, or I did this, I got a chance to perform at the White House, whatever. Right. I'm like, Wait, there's more. Wait, let me think what else I can do. You know, and then I make a new list, and then I do something else. But what? Not forgetting where I came from, right? And not also th seeing this young woman or this young man saying, you know, man, how did you do that? Right. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, I can take you with me. I don't know if they right. know. So. Right. Now, is there something that you think when people look from the outside, it's it's real easy to say, oh. He's got it real easy. What an easy life. He's traveled. He does this. He does that. What do you think the biggest misconception? Because you wear Khaled, the performer, the choreographer, now the entrepreneur. You, you, you know, you're doing all these things. What's the biggest misconception you think people have about being well, maybe there's two. Maybe there's two things. Mm -hmm. Because one, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Tell it's us. so easy. It's so easy to look at the outside shell and say, okay, He's wearing these clothes, or he's flying on this plane, or he's living that life. He's always in a good mood. Like, little do you know yeah. what it took to get these clothes, what it took to get on that plane at that 6 o'clock morning thing, or how much it, how much I ate that day. There's so many details that people don't really have either have care, care to know about, or they don't have the, the access to get that information. Whatever. There's so, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. And it's never going to be easy until you're, you know, I don't want to say no names, but some people have it easier. You know what I mean? When you're rich or something. Uh, <laughs> but, and the other thing is that, you know, uh, I was going to say, the second thing is that, that, um, that it, that it's the same. Oh, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Like, that things are the same. Right. It's, it's not, when I make, like, cause, cause body percussion and stepping and, and, and all the things I do almost, because I've fused them so many times in so yeah. many ways. It like may look like, oh, that's I've seen that before. I'm like, no, you haven't. Mm -hmm. It's different because I never did this before. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never, no one's ever put hand bone and 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 body percussion and step and then poetry in the same person. You right. know what I mean? Or whatever have you. You know what I mean? So I think people think it's tap dance and and, and they, it's, oh, it's tap. You doing that tap stuff? I'm like, really, dude? Really? Okay, <laughs> let me just educate you real quick. What? Greek fraternity, you know what I mean? Right. So I think that people think it's easy and it's, it's the same stuff. And I, I don't ever, and maybe, and that's on me if, it, if I'm not, you know, creating something that is new to your ear. Mm -hmm. Now that's where I got to be on my, I can't just point the finger, but I got to educate people at the same time. And that's what and why Soul Clap Fitness is around. Right. 
Soul Clap Fitness is an educational tool through fitness to show people how one to use their body as a musical tool and instrument, but also what the differences are between this umbrella we call body music. Right. You know what I mean? You have stepping, you have gumbo, you got hand bone, you got tap even, you know? There's so many styles underneath this body music umbrella that when you see it, you might say, oh, that's, I know, that's the tap stuff you do. Mm -hmm. No, brother, let me show you. It's a lot here. Right. And, and, and people don't even know that, you yeah. know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, through the, the avenues that I have at my exposure or whatever, like, I want to teach people that. Right. So whether it be through Molotti, and Molotti is a, a polyrhythmic percussive uh, chord, uh, uh, ensemble that uses the, you know, traditional styles of body percussion, African. Uh, and we have, a, we have a way of telling our story and telling the, the history and educating people in that. So there's that, and then there's Soul Clap Fitness, through fitness once again. And then, you know, videos and whatever, YouTube, Facebook, all those other right. ways that we have to, to teach people. But hands-on is the best way. Right, you know, right. In person. Now, with all of those things that you do, is there, because you are a performer, there's a, there's a moment where you are on stage and you are Khaled, the performer. Mm -hmm. Is there, a, I don't want to say an on and off switch, but is there a moment where it's, okay, Khaled, the man, is just me, Khaled, and then over here it's Khaled the performer and then over here do you have separation are you able to separate those between the business hat the performer and the man I guess I've learned how to mm -hmm. I used to never try to I used to try to make it all the same thing but there's times when I'm like turn that off mm -hmm. because I can't do both or everything you know what I mean mm -hmm. so yes there I think that's the part of becoming grown mm -hmm. or just learning how to be sufficient and use your time and I've been listening to it. I have to say Eric Thomas's name because he's one of my biggest inspirations as a speaker from Detroit. Eric Thomas, shout out. He's one of them. He's awesome. And he speaks on a lot of things that really trigger and touch me. I'm like, yeah, you know, you gotta, you know, everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I, right, I gotta do, I gotta go hard. I gotta grind. I gotta be an entrepreneur. I gotta, I gotta make this happen. But then I gotta, you know, I gotta cut that up because if it's time to be a performer, I got I can't wear both hats. Right. Because I want to perform well. Right. And I want to entertain well. And I want to teach well. Right. And you know, so I think that's what I had learned, and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm young, but I'm still learning how to grow and work in different pools of energy or whatever. You know what I mean? like, right. Do you think that's that's something that's important? And I think uh, a lot of young performers or people that are not performers and maybe don't understand how taxing this lifestyle can be in there's actually a lot of thought that should go into maintaining the balance of physical mind yeah. emotional mm -hmm. what you eat how you take care of yourself physically and all of that and that's something that and and, and I took a long time to learn this mm -hmm. and I'm still learning and from people like yourself I wasn't stretching I wasn't eating right I you know what I mean mm -hmm. I thought I had the genes to keep going and do my, but I did, I do find the value in the, you know, the importance of quality of life, quality of eating, mentally, just even sleep, you know, Eric Thomas would tell you, you only need three hours, like, bro, I need a little bit more, I need to sleep, because I need to, I need to act, I need to be, you know, I'm a physical person, I use my body as my tool, so if that's not rested, Say that again. my yeah. body is my tool and my vessel and alhamdulillah, yeah. I have to make sure that I can ex I can serve well. Yeah. I can't serve well if this ain't working. Right. So getting this right, whether it's sleep or me uh, uh, you know meditation and just you know loving something, you know having compassion towards something so that you ain't egotistical or all that, and also eating right, sleep, right. you know, and, and then. Stretch, stretching, I please y'all. I and mean, I still need to stretch <laughs> more so she can help me out. But I do stretch more than I ever used to. But I think it could be part of age, but it's also part of just just being more conscious of it. Con conscious of it all, yeah. Is there anything that you want to maybe share that people don't know about college? We're going to add, just so you guys know, at the bottom of this, we're going to add all the URLs of okay. the YouTube channel and, and some more... Um, links so you guys can get to know him of what he's done up until this point and then it'll make a lot more sense as to what you'll see in his journey this year but i don't know i, I would say that 
a couple things. Maybe there's nothing to prove, only to share. And with that statement, I use that to kind of, you know, what I mean, keep me on, in control, keep me in my balance. You know what I mean, like I'm not, I, I'm a great entertainer, I'm a great performer, a great teacher, whatever have you, if that's how people see it. Mm -hmm. But it's not about proving that. I don't have to right. prove it to you. I'm just gonna share it with you. Right. And um, I don't know, having fun, living, living what you, you know, loving what you do, and being able to do something that you love every day and you can do it for the rest of your life. That's like your purpose, you know, knowing your purpose is knowing that you can do something that you can really love and do it, you know, forever and whatever, however long you feel like you want to do it. But, um, I don't know. Uh, and, you know, can I get a soul clap? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there was one more thing I want to say. I don't know. Uh, love, peace, and hair. So clap, yeah. Okay. Well, I for one want to say that I am blessed, first of all, to know you, but second of all, to see your growth, your progression, oh, continuing you. to strive. It um, always brings me joy to see people achieve and continue to achieve and remain humble and driven and, and continue with the heart that they started out with. And I am looking forward to all of you following him in this year, which is which going to love, bring Here we go. a lot of successes we we that we can't do. really share right we now. A lot of work to do. There's some things definitely cooking in the pot, and so and as well as um, be on this journey and learn with you through challenges that this year might may bring as well. So I think um, stay tuned, everybody. It's going to be a great year. So stay tuned. Uh, thank, thank you. So you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>